Hello everyone and welcome to another of my Avid mini tutorials. This one is on dealing with aspect ratio and frame sizes in the exporting process and making sure that things output the way that you want and show up the way that you want. I'll note I do have two existing tutorials on related topics. So one is on dealing with if you have media coming into Avid that's in different aspect ratios or different orientations and how to handle that. And another one that really is a detailed walkthrough of the whole exporting process and takes you through every step and what all the settings are and everything with that. So there's links to both of those in the description below. I'm not gonna rehash all that here. What I really wanna look at here is just some of the settings available to you in the exporting options for Avid and how you can control them to make sure you're exporting things the way that you want and getting the look that you want. So we'll look at a couple different options for how you may want to set those settings and change them depending on what you're trying to export and what you want it to look like. So I've got a little sample clip here. I just have a kind of two second clip down here in my timeline to look at. And this is 16.9 footage and you can see it's displaying the whole 16.9 frame here. And if I pull up my project settings, command comma, you'll see it is 16.9. This is a standard 1080p project. So regular HD video. And if I just want to export it like this, I can do that. So I already have my in and out point set here. I already have the sequence selected, what I want to export. And I'll go to my output export to file. And it's very important in Avid to note with these export settings, and I say this in the other tutorial, but it's worth mentioning again, that if this is your own computer and you've created all these and you know exactly what they do, that's fine to trust them. In general, when you first install Avid or if you're working in a lab or anything like that, you wanna check and make sure these are actually doing what you say they are because these names don't have any inherent connection to what the settings are. So I can have any settings with any name. So in this case, I've made myself a little preset here for this demo. And here, uh, for all of these, I'm just gonna export a QuickTime movie. You could set this to other things if you wanted to export an MXF or an MP4 or whatever. For purposes of this demo, my final output format and really the codec don't particularly matter. So I'm gonna leave those alone and just focus on a couple other things. So what I'd like you to note is there's kind of two different chunks of settings here in Avid. So the first one is this source raster. So what is the original source and what are we doing with that? And we'll talk about some options with that later. And then I have the second one that says image, and it gives me some of these options again. I think this can be a little confusing. This is one of those things in Avid that I understand what they're trying to do, and this really does give you a ton of power, as you'll see, to export things in all sorts of different ways and really get exactly what you're trying to do. But I don't think it's the most obvious in terms of how you set things to get exactly what you're looking for using these kind of two settings. But it's Important to understand there's kind of these two levels. There's the source raster and then there's the image. So let's start off with just our sort of standard export. I just want to export the footage exactly as it was as sort of our starting point. So I'm going to set this to the project raster. It's already 1920 by 1080. I'm not going to do anything else here. Then in the image, set the same 1920 by 1080, 16, nine aspect ratio and one to one pixel ratio. And all this is fine. And this is actually not going to end up mattering at this point because we're not changing anything. So I could set this to any of these options I want and it won't make a difference because I have the same thing up here, this 1920 by 1080 image, and I'm exporting it as a 1920 by 1080. So it doesn't need to crop it or stretch it or pillar box it. So any of those would work. And like I said, the rest of these settings, I'm going to leave alone in this case. It doesn't really matter for our purposes today. Obviously, in a normal export, you would check your codec and your audio settings and everything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it and I'm just going to call this temp sequence one. We're going to export a whole bunch of different versions of this so that exported. And here it is. And as you can see, it looks exactly as you would expect. It's that full 16.9 image that we had in here. You can see that whole image shows up and nothing's being cropped. The footage is all there. The aspect ratio is the same. Great. We got exactly what we were looking for. That's what you would expect. But now let's say we want to do something a little different. So let's say for instance that this was shot 16.9, but our actual plan was to mat this down for a wider aspect ratio, like a two, three, nine to one. This is pretty common. A lot of things are shot 16.9 and then matted later. The way I would first wanna do this, if you're not aware of this tool, you do have in your format settings for your project, I can go to mask margins and I can tell it, what do I want this to be masked to? So let's say we're doing a two, three, nine to one, a classic CinemaScope aspect ratio. And I can apply that. And you'll see what's showing up here is, I can see these little gray bars which showing this is what this would look like masked to that. I will say if you're working on a project that was shot 16.9 and plans to be matted to something more wide after that, this is really handy to have on while you're editing. 
It doesn't take a lot of overhead, just as a way for me to kind of get a sense of what the actual framing will be. And you can change these settings. So if I go in here to user settings, composer, the viewer tab, I have some options here for what this is looking like. So I could make it a black mask and that's gonna show completely black or, and that's for the source monitor and I wanna affect the record monitor. So let's change that, mix to white. Okay, and you can see now it's kind of a lighter part. I like these sort of mixed two ones because I can still get a sense of what the entire frame is and if I'm missing something in the top or bottom to know about there. So I always just have this set on the mixed black, but you can choose what you want. And that'll just change how your mask is displaying while you're editing. And as you saw, you can set it separately for your source monitor and your record monitor. So I can see now, here's what this will look like when it's matted down to 239. Okay, so let's say I was doing that and this was what I wanted to ultimately do for the project was mask it like that. Let's go ahead and export this again. Okay, I'll go back in here. And let's just say I did exactly these same settings. It's actually not gonna end up doing quite what I want, but just wanted to show you that. So we'll call this number two. And you'll see it exported exactly the same thing as number one. So I did not get those black letterboxing bars in here. And the reason is because it's doing exactly what I told it to, which is to do the full project raster and this full frame here. And I didn't have this box click. So if I say I want to enable the mass margins, what it's going to do is say, hey, actually go ahead and put those letterboxing bars in there if there are some set. And it's going to do them for whatever the settings were that I set for my mass margin. So if it's 239, it'll mask it to 239. If it's something else, it'll mask it to that. So I'm just going to check this box, do that, and we'll call this number three. And we'll export that. And you can see now it exported the same thing with the black bars in there matching the framing that I had here. So you can see it changed these to full on black and I'm getting that narrower, wider aspect ratio that I was looking for. I still have a 16.9 image. If I look at the details on this, you can see it's still a full 1920 by 1080, 16.9 with those black bars baked in. This is commonly something that you'll do a lot of times you're trying to actually finish something to 16.9, even if it has those letterboxing bars in it because it's gonna display on a TV or something like that and they actually want 16.9 content. So that's very common. But let's say that I wanted to do something a little different here and instead of having those black bars, I just wanna export the video content itself without the black bars. So in this case, instead of enabling the mask margin, I'm gonna say crop it to the mask margins. So what it's gonna do is actually those parts that would be these black letterboxing bars, it's just gonna cut those off. And so you can see it has the same width, but a smaller height. So went from 1080 high to 804 because it's losing those extra pixels that were taking up that extra data. Now I've changed my source raster to something different, but my image you'll see is still set to 1920 by 1080. Here's where things can start to get a little tricky and you have to really think about what you're trying to do. So first off, let's just see what happens if I crop this here and then I still have the image settings as the 1920 by 1080. So we can see what that does. And I'll say one of the things to be aware of is if you're doing some weird things with changing aspect ratio or outputting odd pixel ratios, sometimes you have to play around a little bit to get what you were actually trying to do. It helps to think through it, but sometimes you're like, I think this is what I wanna do. Let me output it a little test and check it. Okay, so I output this, let's see what happens. What you'll notice here is we do not have the entire frame anymore. So to compare this, let me pull up the previous one we did. Okay, so as I asked for, I don't have those black bars recorded. You can see it's kind of just showing the footage part of this. But if you look, we've lost some of the width. So you can see here's this post here and then plenty of space on the side. And over here on the right, there's plenty of space beyond his arm. And here you can see it's actually narrower. We've cropped off some parts of the edges. And here's why. So what we just did was we took this 1920 by 804 image and said, hey, we need to output this as 1920 by 1080, but it's gonna say, well, wait, this does not match this. So what do I do? So in this point, this source scaling down here becomes important. And what it was set to was center crop. So it's going to crop off the center part of the image to get the correct ratio, because it's saying we wanna export something 16.9. So what it was actually doing is basically, let me move this over here for a second. It's basically kind of outputting this. 
So it's finding a 16-9 aspect ratio within that footage inside the map bars, but that means we're losing parts of this edge. So that's what happened. If we set this to something different, then something different would happen. So if I do pillar box, letter box, what you're gonna see is we're gonna get something very similar to what we just had before, because now I'm taking this smaller image, but I'm still putting it in a 1920 by 1080 frame, and it's just gonna put some black bars on the top and bottom. So I'm gonna be back to exactly what I had when I did this, but let's kind of show you that that's what's happening here. So you can see I've got that extra width on both sides back now, but also I have these black bars back now. So you can see how those two things are interplaying. And the important thing I think to remember is this is always happening first. First it's deciding what part of this original source am I taking? And then it's putting it in a box that's described by this and kind of how it scales it to that box and stuff is decided by these things. Uh, if I did stretch, that was our third option because we already did center crop, we did pillar box, letter box. What we're gonna see is it's gonna take this image that doesn't quite have enough height and it's gonna stretch it vertically to fit this. So everything's gonna look a little bit vertically stretched. Okay, so you can see no black bars. We're filling the whole frame, but you can see that everything is stretched out vertically a little bit here. And that might be easier to see if I pull this up next to one of the clips that is not stretched. Right, so you can kind of see the proportions there and see how, look at his face, it's like stretched out vertically that way compared to here. And look at kind of the proportions of the width tied here, you can see that he's now like taller relative to his width than he is over here. I'm getting something in some cases, not necessarily something I would want, but I'm getting exactly what I'm telling it to do. So let's go back to our original question and say like, hey, I'm trying to just output this correctly though. I just want that center part of the image. I don't want to see any black bars and I don't want anything stretched or cut off. I want that whole image here, but just the part that I want. And it's going to end up being in a non-standard size. This is not a standard size, but I just want to output that part. Now I have to think a little bit about what I'm trying to do here. There's a couple ways I could do this. I'm going to say, I'm going to go with the original project raster. So take the original image. That's where we're starting with. And then what do I want to do with it? What I'm going to say is I want to output something that's a 2, 3, 9 to 1 aspect ratio because that's what I want to end up with. And what I want to do is crop. So how do I get from this whole image to something that's 2, 3, 9 to 1 is I want to crop off the top and bottom. So I'm going to crop off the part that would be covered by these black bars here. And something I'm going to note here is this says 1920 by 1080 still. And it's also changed the pixel aspect ratio. So instead of a one-to-one -one pixel aspect ratio, it's now doing some sort of rectangular pixels. And I'll show you what's happening here, but let's go ahead and export this and take a look. Okay, so you can see we got what we wanted. It is the entire image. If I look back here, you can see I've gotten that entire width of what I wanted. Nothing looks weirdly stretched. I've got all the space in the left and right that I'm expecting to have and there's no black bars. It really just did export the part of the image I wanted. Now here's the kind of interesting thing in what it did. If I look at my information here, you can see that it still outputted as a 1920 by 1080. So what it's doing is instead of using square pixels and cropping off the top and bottom, it's using rectangular pixels, and you can see it's actually displaying as 2578 by 1080 to get that correct aspect ratio. So this will work if this is what I wanted to do. There's other ways I could play with this as well. I'll show you one more. If I was actually doing this, normally about the only place where I would actually want to export the 239 center file is if I was going to uh, DCP, in which case I actually can't be in 1920 by 1080. I'm going to need to go to the DCI specs for scope, which would be 2048 by 858. So you can see it's working with a little wider raster because of our DCI specs, which is what is used for DCP, which is what is projected in theaters, if you didn't know that is actually a little wider in the scope case than standard 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to select this and it knows now that it's supposed to be a 239 to 1 and that it's a 1 to 1 aspect ratio for the pixels. So the frame size is going to be 239 to 1 but the pixels are back to being square pixels. And again I'm going to do a center crop to crop out the middle part of this as it scales it. And you can see again we got something that looks exactly the same to the eye as what we had before. It's got exactly the same image here except in this case it actually is just those pixels. There's no weird pixel stretching or remapping or anything like that. I've just gotten this thing which I now could use to build into a 
DCP if I needed to do that. So that's some of the stuff I can play with here. Let me show you one other option just to get a sense of kind of how this works. Let's put our mass margins back on so we get those black bars where we wanted them. I can now put in different sorts of formats. Uh, let's say that I wanted for some reason to export this in a vertical frame, so 9 by 16 instead of 16 by 9. If you're doing something weird like this, this is going to be a case where the, what I'm doing with the scaling makes a huge difference. So I'm going to do two versions. I'm going to do one as a center crop and I'll do one as a pillar box letter box. You can see the difference this makes what these settings are. And in both cases, what I'm doing is exporting a vertical frame, so it'll be taller than it is wide. Think of a standard 169 turn 90 degrees on its side. Okay, so I'm going to call this center crop, just remember what's what. And let's go ahead and do another version right away using that player box letterbox option. And what the heck, this is not going to give us anything that we would in, I think, any situation really want. But let's do the stretch option just for completeness here. Okay, so now I've got these three options. So first one, if we look at the center crop, what it's doing is it's taking that image and it's really cropping it down to the center. So we lost all the things on the left and right. And you might say, well, wait, why didn't it crop down to the whole image? And in fact, it did, but remember we put in those masks. So these black bars are back in here, which are considered part of the original source image. This whole image, including the part that we ended up covering with the black bars, I had it set to count as part of the image. If we did that differently, so for instance, if I started with cropping it to the mask margins instead of with the whole project raster, and then did center crop here, you'll see this will look a little different because now it's going to crop all the way to where the black bars let off. So we're really just cropping down to this part, but then you can see it also cut off even more of the left and right because it has to do that to fill the height of the screen in this case. So this was our center crop. It's really cropping off a huge amount of the image, but we can make it fill this uh, whole screen if we wanted. Let's look at our pillar box. And that's exactly what you would expect. It's putting black bars in to fill the space. If I had something vertical and was exporting it in a horizontal frame, it would put bars on the side. That's called pillar boxing instead of letter boxing. So I got the whole image in this case because I told it to just use pillar boxing or letter boxing, not crop anything off. So I want the whole image. I just need you to fill in the rest of the space. And in this case, since we have this very wide frame put into this very tall box, I get a lot of black space there. And then lastly, the stretch option, which like I said, is not what we're going to want. And you can see this is stretching things vertically to fit the space. Again, it's still including those black bars because we had the mask margins on in there. If I turn those off, you would see the footage that was behind this. If instead in the original source raster, we had said crop to mask margins, then I wouldn't get any of this. It would have just cut down to this part and stretch that even more. You know what the heck, let's do that just for fun and get an even more stretched version. Very stretch. Okay, so you can see that is the same image content here. You can see they're not cropping anything off in either case. It's the same exact information, just very much stretching it uh, vertically in this case. So that's how you can work with those settings to get things correct. I want to show one more type of example and something that you wouldn't necessarily commonly run into now, but I have seen it happen with students. So wanted to talk through that. And the case here is actually working with a standard def project, which again, we don't deal with a ton today, but sometimes you might be working on something that has some old standard def media that you're incorporating into a documentary or something or whatever. In this case, this is something I was using as a editing exercise for some students and had already compressed the footage down to standard def. But it brings up some of the same types of questions, but some different options as well. So just wanted to quickly share this. And in this case, what's interesting is the actual core image here is 16.9, but this is very common with standard def media from around the period where we were transitioning from SD to HD. It's actually 16.9, but it's embedded in a 4.3 image. So these black bars here are part of the image. They are recorded in there. This is actually a 4.3 frame. You can see it's closer to a square. It's like an old TV as opposed to the more rectangular 16.9 that we're used to. And you can set this in your project settings. And so if I bring up my settings, command comma, and go to the aspect ratio for your project, you'll see in this case, you'll notice I didn't have this as an option in my HD project. This was locked at 16.9. In this case, for standard def projects, you have to tell it what is my footage. 
And if I tell it it's 16.9, which I might think I want to do because it was a 16.9 image, you can see what it did there is it thinks, okay, this whole image is 16.9, so it stretches it out. But remember the inner part here was 16.9. Those black bars are still part of the image. So the actual total image, including the black bars was 4.3. So I actually want this set to 4.3. And you can see those beer cans kind of look like they're shaped correctly like that. If we go to 16.9, they don't. You can see they look elongated here because we're stretching them out widthwise, but if they're standing up straight, now they look really short and squat because again, they're being stretched widthwise or smashed vertically, however you want to look at it. So if we go back to 4.3, you'll see now those look correct and now their aspect ratio kind of stays the same whether we're here or here. You can see the sort of proportions look the same, which is what we want. Okay, so again, I've got a short little sequence set here and let's just say we want to export this using what we've already learned. I'll just call this A. You'll see my numbers here are different because this is a standard def project. So the 1920 by 1080 that we might be used to seeing, or if you're working in UHD, the 3840 by 2160. This is different because it's just standard def media, but I have the same sort of thing, project raster, and I can turn on my mass margins or not. And then I need to output the image. And here's where you can get into trouble. If I didn't really dig into my settings here, by default, this might've just been set to a 1920 by 1080, which is often the thing I'm trying to export. So let's just say I did that. We'll see what happens. You'll notice the image was showing correctly in Avid when I was working. It showed up correctly there. So now I'm going to export it. And you'll see what happens is we get that stretched image. Again, the cans look sort of elongated there and then squatter here. And this is what we would expect because what I just did was I took this thing that was displaying correctly in a 4 to 3 aspect ratio. And then I told Avid, hey, I want you to export this in 16.9. So it has to do something to make that happen. And so what it did was it stretched it. Again, I have my options here for what I'm going to do with that. So I could do a center crop. And let's see what happens with that, just to show you kind of the idea here. So I have this correctly proportioned original image here at 720 by 496, and I'm putting it into a larger box. And so what I'm saying is, hey, I want to crop things off to fit it into that box. I'll call this CC for center crop. Okay, and you can see what actually happened there is this worked because back in Avid, I had a 16.9 image in the middle of this 4.3 image. So what it's doing is it's cropping off the top and bottom. You'll notice we don't have those black bars anymore and it's keeping the proportions of things the same. Now you'll notice because this was low res footage, it looks very blown up and kind of grainy here, but I'm getting things in the right aspect ratio and proportion correctly, which is what I was looking for. If we did something different, just for an example, I'll use pillar box, letter box. This is going to give us something kind of interesting. And let's think about what's going to happen here. So I'm taking this original image, which remember, even though there's black bars on the top and bottom, this is a 4-3 image, and we're trying to fit it into a wider box. So what it's going to do to keep the whole thing is it's going to pillar box it. So it's going to put black bars on the left and right, but they're already black bars built into the top and bottom. So what I'm going to get is a video that has the whole picture kind of in a black frame all the way around it. And again, that shouldn't be a surprise. This is Avid doing exactly what I am telling it to do. I just have to think about what do I want it to do and how do I get those settings correct? So you can see here's the black bars on the left and right that Avid just put in to fit it in this wider box. Here's the black bars in the top and bottom, which you can see are actually not quite as black, probably because they are standard def and your black levels are a little higher than what we had on the uh, higher def version. Anyhow, but so you can see I get the frame I want. It's just in a giant black frame all the way around it, which if that's what you're going for, great. Usually it wouldn't be, but okay. Let's try one more thing, which is just, I could say, hey, instead of trying to put this in some weird HD box, let's just put it in a standard, standard def box, NTSC. You can see now my numbers actually don't quite match up here. They're somewhere, I want to keep this in a 4-3 aspect ratio. And let's see what happens in this case. Okay, and now I got kind of exactly what I would expect. I got the whole original image out. So again, remember the original image has the picture in the middle and those black bars at the top and bottom. I got that whole thing out. Everything is proportioned correctly as I would expect. And somewhat ironically, it looks a little less stretched because I'm not trying to upscale it. If I blew this up really giant, you would start to see things falling apart. But it's not like I'm trying to up res this to HD res. I'm just keeping it at the original resolution that it was, which is lower resolution. And so this exports fine like this, and this would work. So hopefully that's helpful in just sort of understanding those options. Again, if you're trying to do something weird, 
you probably want to run a quick little test with those specific settings and make sure it's doing exactly what you want it to in terms of how it is cropping things or stretching things or reframing or whatever. If you're just outputting things normally in a 1920 by 1080 or SD or in UHD, if you're working in one of those, this is usually pretty straightforward as you can see. It's really when you start to get some strange things that you have to worry more about those settings. But again, there's a lot of power in here. You can see I can really kind of stretch and change this frame in the export any way I want to get the final thing that I'm trying to get out. You just have to be a little thoughtful about how you're doing it and particularly remembering that you're first setting that project raster and then you're setting how that is being manipulated and treated to fit into the final export box. So hope that's helpful and see you next time.